This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to Q Season 4, Episode 23. I gotta say, out of all four seasons, I think Hinata's Dig is definitely top five. I don't know about top three that you said. It could be. I still gotta think about it and reflect on all the other amazing scenes, but definitely in my top five. I can't believe how many of you have been saying that you've been waiting all season to be able to watch this reaction episode together and I appreciate all of your guys' patience. You guys have been waiting for over a year and a half, almost two years, without any spoilers, following me along every episode to climax and culminate to this point. So thank you so much for following along. I'm definitely excited to watch the next few episodes and you guys have not let me down. Every time you've given me a heads up on how good the next episode is, I've never been disappointed. And the fact that so many of you are saying that these last couple episodes are your favorite, cannot wait i am ready for the goosebumps my skin is ready come on was i the only one that was thinking that hinata was going to get hit in the face and get a weird dig again let me know in the comments below i want to clarify about my plans after we are done with season four i think there was some confusion based on the comments that i've been reading but after we're done with season four and season five is not released i plan on making a few additional haiku videos like my top five favorite scenes from season four maybe try a few of hinata's moves and once i'm done with those i'm going to re-react all the way from season one episode one so we'll be extending this haiku journey for another two to three years also if you want early access to all my haiku reaction videos five days before i release it on youtube make sure you sign up for my patreon linked below and you get access to a lot of other exclusive content as well now let's get this haiku party started i love how they start the beginning of these competitions with just that big stadium view Oh, is this the special captain number one? He has a funny walking rhythm. He's kind of like jerking his head. That was not the best animation of walking. Hmm. Captain has a chance to collaborate with the coach. Let's read that again. Wouldn't putting me back in right now be passively defensive? I'm trying to read into why he would say that. My guess is that maybe keeping the hitters in back row would give him more offensive options. And this is kind of a safe decision to keep the ball alive versus prioritize some offense. This is my best offensive attack. The Mias are totally on point today. So if I'm putting you in, it means that the last, so if I'm putting you in, it means that the last thing they should do is step on the brakes. Gosh, why am I having such a hard time understanding what their conversation is about? The last thing they should do is step on the brakes. All right, I guess we just gotta watch to see the meaning of that conversation here. Cause he does have a small smirk. He disagrees with their their slogan. Yeah, he's very different than all those intense players. So he's kind of similar like Daichi, where he's not going to be the go-to hitter or passer, but he's going to glue the team and support everyone. Aha, and there he identifies Daichi. Got that mutual respect. The birth of the Serene King. Ooh, are they referring to Kageyama? Is this going to be Kageyama's big episode? Oh, that was tough. We got to replay that again. So you see how Suki's crouching down and then he's looking left or right because he's trying to look at the setter, look at his middle and decide what his setter's gonna do, but he also doesn't want to lose track of what his middle's gonna do in case he gets set. And that's just so stressful. Honestly, 
I think middle blocker is probably the most difficult position to play, at least at the higher level. And the worst part is they don't get a lot of praise because they don't block a lot of balls due to the nature of the game, but they are involved in every play. See how he's looking back and forth and then he has to make a decision. Especially when you have a good setter that's deceptive, that's tough. Mm, some trash talking across the net. And the funny, the fact that Zuki said probably, I think it's it's like a psychological trick. Wow, Zuki actually talking here. Synchro cookie. Oh, is that a miss or is that for somebody? Oh, it's because Zuki is a little tired. Damn, that was a missed opportunity. You don't get those back very often against a good team. Wow, I love that Tsuki is just taking responsibility and not being snarky. Nah, he, he just got a max jump and jump with maximum intent. Ooh. <laughs> I like that conversation. Man, let's do a flashback of when Kageyama first tried to communicate with his players and he was so awkward. And now look at him. He's trying to manage fatigue, but not in a condescending way. Although I think Tsuki is kind of receiving it like that. But he's asking him honestly, hey, are you going to be ready? If not, that's okay. If you're too tired, just let me know and I'll go away from you. And one thing you're always going to get from Suki is an honest answer. So the fact that he said he's ready, that means he'll be ready. Followed up on that last one. What does he mean? Oh, okay. So he sets him right away and he gets a crush. So he is ready. Okay, he's clenching his fist. I think one of you said that that's part of Asahi's serving routine that Coach Ukai recommended for him. That's way too many steps. Oh, but those animations are sick. Let's rewind that. Let's count how many steps here. Listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, for those who are curious about understanding why that's a big deal to me, you never want to do a seven step approach. I mean, you might be able to find a justification if that really works for you, but it's a lot of excess energy and you have to start super, super far back. Even the professional players, probably four or three, mostly four at the most, but I don't think I've ever seen a five-step approach. That's where a volleyball player who is animating or part of the team needs to impose a little bit more realism into that part and just remind the animator to only do four steps. Yes. Unfortunately, the animation is very okay so far. That ball compression on the floor was not that great, but the story has been great so far. Samurai boy. <laughs> Is that the trucker guy? Oh, yeah. You want to save your energy a little bit? Oh, that's right. They talked about being hungry and inspiring each other that way. Nice receive it. Let's see what the twins do. Oh, they will. Okay, they read it and they slow down Iran's spike. The overhead dig. Oh, he's hungry though. He's hungry. Are they going to do the back real quick? 
is he going to dump it at the last minute? Minus Tempo. Oh, did they make a mistake? Because that is too low. Oh, good save. That's why you got your captain in there. This is the determination. That is the glue. That's what you want your captain to do. Ah, some philosophical words from Daichi here. Our concept doesn't change. What is their concept? Synchro-Kokegi! Are they gonna set Daichi here? What are they gonna do? Oh, Daichi is not accepting that I'm not just gonna be a third option. I'm just gonna be... Is he coming from the Dakro? Yes, he is! Daichi's moment. Oh, a captain on captain crime. That was pretty sick. Daichi needs his moment. And they're going to yell. That was a poetic moment. I feel like we haven't really seen Daichi have his arc. Like, great moment. Breakthrough moment. Oh, that was very realistic. Yes. So, great animation here where you're kind of balanced in passing posture what we call medium posture and then stumbling forward to be able to save the ball with one arm off in that very very fluid animation here and then we go to Tsuki's play now we got to freeze frame it I didn't realize this until I paused it first I will say that this is what middle blockers need to learn not only do you need to be able to snap down the overpass just to finish the point but if it's really tight to the net it's just as effective and sometimes more effective if you can't swing is to just wipe it side to side or just snap it down with both hands you don't really need a lot of power you just need to direct it downward and away from somebody I was just about to compliment Tsuki's technique and then I see this freeze frame here where Tsuki's hands are behind the net that does not make sense the only way to execute this move properly is your hands have to be over the net if you're behind the net the ball is actually on your side so man just when I thought this episode was going to be great the animation is just not cutting it right now hopefully it will improve with some of the other action scenes The goddess of victory. Who is the goddess of victory? Maybe that's just a, a phrase, not necessarily a person in the anime. Oh, that was a bounce smash. Who is that guy? I don't remember seeing that guy with black hair until now. I love these food references, making me hungry. Ooh, that was good animation. Smooth. Oh, Kageyama hitting on two. That was pretty sick. Uh oh, now I'm going to get confused on who's setting who. Okay, gray hair setter is the usual setter. Oh, they're going to do it. I love this confidence here. Minus tempo from the back row. Oh, no, he doesn't. But they got a triple block read. Oh no, one and a half. Ooh. I thought I saw all three blockers move. That was a sick play. And I like that Samu didn't get set two times in a row and he's just as excited. Yeah, that's a lot to keep track of. So many weapons on Inari. Ah, oh, he's getting tired. And the fact that he wants some carbs, let's see if they give him some energy in the timeout. Ooh, Tanaka with an easy tool off the block. That's my boy. Is he getting tired? He is breathing a little heavy. You know who never runs out of energy is Hinata. He needs to be the one to come in and save the day.
still serving a Ron. That's a good strategy because he's not their best passer. Oh, no. <laughs> that was deceptive. Let's watch that again. Oh, that's exactly how you want to do it. This is textbook setter dump technique. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking setter dump is about power, and occasionally you do want to do that, but you're going to score a lot more points on deception. You want to jump up with both hands like you're about to set, and at the last second, turn your left hand and just point. Let it bounce off your fingers and just tap it over. Here's the thing. The only way to generate power is you actually have to load your hand a little bit and then follow through, and you have to bring your right hand out of the way. If I tap it, I can actually kind of keep my right hand there or move it forward and just tap it over because I don't need as big of a follow through or any follow through when I'm just tapping it over there. So deception is the key setters. Remember that. And I've been there before. Sometimes you're so focused on trying to block the hitter that you forget that the setter's front row. All right, the captain coming through with some encouraging words. I think this was the serving specialist that regretted not giving 100%, and he gave 100% last time and crushed it. Man, that's just such a strange serving routine there. All right, we're back to some good animation. Overpass, smash. Oh, Genjima came in, hitting that overpass. Uh-oh, 24. I think I made the prediction that Karasuno is going to lose so they can make another story for Season 5. It would be too picture perfect if they ended up winning this one. And I love how all the teams are watching. Ooh, people are rooting for Karasuno, the underdogs. All right, they're reusing this breathing animation from Tanaka. I don't blame them. Sometimes you gotta spend your money elsewhere for animation. Ooh, Tanaka's feeling it. Okay. Ah, uh, we can definitely learn something from Tanaka where he says, this is why my instincts are telling me not to go any harder because he is feeling it, he is on a roll, and he's becoming more dependable and more unstoppable as the game progresses. And what we can learn from Tanaka is, when you're on a roll, the temptation is to get greedier and greedier. You think, oh, I'm feeling it, maybe I can go harder. Even though you just got a kill and no one touched it. I wanna go harder and harder. And you see this on serving runs. First serve is pretty good. Second serve is even better. Third serve, you wanna go even harder, even though it's your third serve. The goal is to put the same effort and focus. Don't increase it, otherwise you're gonna end up hitting out or into the net by getting too greedy. Keep it the same if it's working. If you're on a roll, just keep riding that groove. Don't put more energy into it. Can't believe they would even go into this much detail. They, Whoever wrote this really understands volleyball at a high level. Oh, if we finally get to here, cut back on how many sets you send my way for a bit. Oh. He's gonna save his energy for the end of the game. Is that why? Hmm. Yeah. Kageyama said no, because he believes in him. Did not expect that one. Good angle from Asahi. And Tanaka's feeling it. Is he gonna go into that sharp angle? No! Someone please cover it! Who's gonna kick save? Oh, Nishinoi is there, I knew it! Send him again. Oh, bump set. Whoa, that was sick. Bump set to Hinata on the quick. Is he gonna miss it? Are they gonna get another lucky break? Oh, falling fadeaway set. That was ballsy. Another dig from Nishinoya. Come on, set Tanaka again. Give him that chance. If Tanaka learned from his experience, that's the second time Tanaka's trying to go sharp angle on the middle blocker. And the middle blocker from Inari does a good job of dropping his hand the last second. If I were Tanaka, I would just aim a little bit higher, almost out, to try to get 
above or over this hand, but maybe you can get a tool off this if you think you can get the angle. Otherwise, you gotta try to go high over line, but you cannot keep going for that sharp angle because it's not working. That is some confidence there. And I love that Kageyama. Oh, the belief. Come on, Kageyama set him. Oh. Ever since the end, okay. Understand that you're, what your hitters are capable of. Tanaka's best weapon is tooling the block, just going hard and deflecting it. To swing high, Tanaka. Yes, Kageyama giving control. Come on, Tanaka. Go high into the hands, go hard. He just needs a hittable ball there. Send it to the very edge. We'll talk about that. Oh, we just talked about this with my setter. Okay. They're still trying to reach in to the angle. And Tanaka is just going to bounce it down the line then. If they're going to keep reaching the angle. The trust. Jumping off the cliff. Okay, goosebumps are coming. Down the line, sick, yes! Man, that was, that was some spike there. Oh, he jumped over, he leaped over that cliff. Man, these analogies, these are, this Japanese poetry, haiku in motion. That was cool, we gotta watch that again. We gotta rewind it back to Kageyama and how much growth he's shown since he was in middle school, he was the one trying to dictate what the hitters are doing. I want you to hit this way, so I'm gonna push you more that way. I want you to hit toward me, so I'm gonna set more on top of me. You should be hitting at this speed. You should be hitting my sets and do what I asked you to do, right? That's why they called him the king. And now he's evolved so much to trusting his teammates. Not only did he deny Tanaka's request to not get set, but he said, no, we need you. And I know what you're capable of, and I'm just gonna trust you. You go from dictating every single play to now giving control up to your hitters and letting them do what they do, which is score. Then we got to talk about Tanaka's evolution and him jumping over that cliff. That's true poetry in motion. And is it a coincidence that haiku sounds similar to haiku? You let me know. Look at that, setting it and trusting it to Tanaka here. And I'm sorry, I gotta point this out though. I was getting in the moment and I was just interrupted with not the best animation. If you look at Asahi's body, his torso is just insanely long relative to his arms. And I know Asahi's arm is bent, but if you visualize it being short, like when you're running, your hand isn't at your ribs. Even when you're jogging, especially on the backswing, you could try right now your hand maybe goes to waist level because on the downswing it goes below your waist and then goes to your chest on the forward swing. And if you measure the distance of his thigh relative to his torso, and I know that we're trying to create some depth perception, so you have to shorten the length of the limb to make it look like it's going forward in space, but it's too short or the knee has to be narrower and smaller to make it look like it's really going forward in space. And then the head is like a sixth the size of the torso. And usually the head should be no smaller than three times the head of your torso. Otherwise, you just kind of look like you have a super tiny head. So unfortunately, these bad proportions just kind of messed it up for me. But I'm going to consciously bring myself back into Tanaka's zone and try to enjoy that moment. And I did feel goosebumps on this one. Not too short, not too long. And the fact that Kageyama just tried to push it out to the antenna just to give him that option. And for those setters out there, you gotta push your sets all the way to the antenna. If you're gonna miss, you gotta miss wide. 
because if you let the set die inside, you're gonna trap your setters. They won't be able to tool the block and you're gonna force your hitters to hit in the seam or into the angle, which is gonna be easier for the middle blockers to close because it's a shorter distance. So make your blockers move the maximum distance. And if your blockers don't close that distance, the hitter's gonna punish them by hitting down the line just like Tanaka did. So setters, push your sets out. Give them that option, give them that option to hit line, seam, or angle. If your sets die inside, you're just gonna trap them. Man, this is definitely moving in slow motion. They've done a good job just kind of savoring it. Oh. You won't believe this. I got a cramp in my right hamstring. <laughs> James, you could put this one in because it's kind of funny. I just had a pretty hard volleyball workout before recording this. And I think I've been clenching my seat during the seat that my right hamstring ended up cramping. Ooh, had to stretch that one out a little bit. <laughs> Come on, I know I don't get super excited, but I feel the intensity as you can see by my cramping right hamstring here. Jumping off that cliff, that's that's gotta be my one of my favorite analogies other than the pythons here. Man, look at that opening up, going cross body down the line. Unfortunately, mediocre ball compression, but everything was pretty solid. Oh, and then landing on the cliff, just when you thought that the analogy couldn't get any better, just taking that leap of faith. So is it 23-24? Yes. Yes. The sister is just so excited, she can't even... She can't even have words, she's just crying. She's usually the loud mouth. Whose hands are these, Tanaka's? Oh, Kageyama, are these like hands of thanks here? What are you gonna, what are you doing? Oh, he's thanking him. Nice toss. Nice key. Ah, where did the goody two shoes go? Yes, people can change. Yes, Kageyama has evolved from the goody two shoes. And now he is able to think on his own, inspire his teammates and trust his teammates as part of the development. And is this what this episode means by the serene king? Calm enough to trust his teammates? We'll see. I think what's really important is how, I think this is Sumu, observed how quickly Kageyama has changed. Now, not in terms of technical execution, that might not always come that fast, but mindset, that can change pretty quickly because it's about your thoughts that you have control over and your decisions, your mental decisions about what you plan to do, what you plan to say, and how you choose to treat your teammates, and also how you choose to approach the game. And Kageyama has done all that consciously in a short amount of time because he's made those choices. And remember, change is about the choices you make. If we don't change, it's because we're not making the choices to move in that direction. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect all the time, or it doesn't mean that the end result is always going to be there, but always remember that you can't get the results you want without change. And change starts with making one better decision at a time. Oh, they're watching on TV. Is this the other setter? Yes, it is. K-pop. I kind of feel bad for K-pop. I think he knows he wants to be in that situation and maybe he's, <laughs> that's right. He was the one that was bullying uh, Kageyama. So he's probably upset that Kageyama exceeded his ability. Now it's that special time in the month where we get to do a special unboxing from one of my favorite monthly subscriptions. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Before we unbox these amazing Japanese treats, let me tell you why I recommend signing up for their monthly subscription. This month's Tokyo Treat theme is Sakura Picnic with an exclusive Sakura themed box. This includes exclusive seasonal Japanese snacks such as Pine Ame Sakura Candy, Strawberry Red Bean Loaf, and Kit Kat Banana Caramel. The Pine Ame Sakura Candy and the loaf are exclusively made for Tokyo Treat subscribers. This month's theme for Sakura Co. is Matcha and Mochi. The box includes Sakura Sencha Tea, exclusively made for Sakura Co. and a lot of matcha themed snacks. Now let's unbox these bad boys. I want to start off with the Sakura box and I chose this green tea sponge cake. If you've been following me along, I've been trying out different treats from both the Tokyo Treat and the Sakura boxes and I've been really enjoying the sponge cakes that the Sakura Co. company has been providing. 
These are made with such care. Look at that. That is a piece of art. Nice and spongy. I know I'm gonna love the texture. Let's see how it tastes. I don't know if it's acceptable in Japanese culture, but if I were to eat this with some tea, which Sakurako does come with some tea, I would actually dip this in the tea and I think it would taste great. Lightly sweet, very strong green tea flavor for those who like that matcha flavor and not overpowering, so very subtle flavors in this one. I decided to wash down my green tea sponge cake with a soda from the Tokyo Treat Box. For those who can read Japanese, if you could let me know what this is, looks like some type of ice cream on top, but it is green. Maybe it could be a green tea soda. Yummy. Lightly carbonated. Actually tastes like honeydew. I think this might be a honeydew soda. Take another bite of my sponge cake that just dropped on the floor here. One more sip. Stay tuned for future episodes where I'll be trying out other treats from both boxes. If you want $5 off your first order of the Tokyo Treat or Sakurugo box, make sure you use my discount code and link in the description box and eat your authentic Japanese snacks with me as we watch the Haikyuu episodes. Let's get back to the show. All right, as this fat bird's flying, I think I got time to bite another one. Keep flying, man. Keep buying me time, this is delicious. 24-23. That is true. If he misses, game over, but Kageyama looks determined. <laughs> You're not just nervous, nothing new. Man, okay, that's some good animation there. Oh, great serve. Right in that seam. Ace? Holy cow, that is some balls of steel right there. Dang, 24-24. This is an even more exciting game than I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to be good, but this is... I couldn't have predicted this, this type of back and forth. I think he's going to go for another one. Oh man, is Kageyama going to single-handedly finish the... Oh! A change-up! I don't think we've seen Kageyama do that yet. He's just feeling it today. Overpass. You know, I think Katasuno is going to win this one. The Serene King. Oh, man. The finish off with Hinata spiking quick down the middle. Man, Katasuno just has too much momentum. And I don't know if Inari has a timeout, but they got to call a timeout, man. They should have called a timeout at 24-24. But the only reason why they don't, I think, is probably because they use both of them. Man, by the time Inari blinks, it's over. Kageyama, the Serene King, and with a tough serve to uh, Iran. Ho ho. Mid game mental trash talking. Oh, damn, he just hit right over him. Man, this is an incredible match. The setter versus setter. This is a true battle between two setters. Yeah, this is a whole nother level. I mean, the setters are the ones that are truly standing out. And that's rare to see the, the setters be the highlight of the match. Ooh, some more backstory from the number one captain. Let's read what this says here. So isn't it hard to have such a genius player who's younger than you on the same team? Yeah, sometimes you people wonder that if you're a starter or maybe one of the better players and then as you progress into the older years, more talented players come in and take that spot. You know, is that hard for them to manage? Yeah, questioning the word genius. Now, to get to this level, it's got to be more than talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 
it's the talent, but then the hard work is what amplifies that talent. Yes, they experiment and they're willing to take risks and expand their toolbox. This is so perceptive. Man, this is very, very, very observant of what great champions think like. Uh huh. The battle of the wills of the setters. I can't handle this poetry here. He's correcting them by thinking they're not born like this. I gotta think about what he just said for a little bit, but I want to finish the scene. Oh, is. He not they're gonna go up for the one-handed set because Rintaro is already up there. One hand is set to Hinata. Oh, is he gonna reach it? Oh, tap it with the finger. He does. Oh no, kick save. Yes, Hinata does his athletic move. Oh man. When you work hard, you have the opportunity to be lucky. Wow, Kanesuno up by one. Man, you cannot. Oh, is Kageyama admitting he's getting tired? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to di digest from what that captain just said. Oh, is he going to compliment? Is he going to compliment Hinata? It's not just the enemy that can push you beyond your limits. It's your teammates. It's Hinata. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 23. Man, there is a lot to unpack. I might just rewatch some of those scenes on my own and just read and be quiet and digest. I didn't want to do that during the reaction because <laughs> I don't know if you just want to watch me watching it. You probably want to watch it for some of my thoughts and emotional reaction. But man, the fact that it was just kind of like a back and forth inspiration battle. First, Kageyama was inspired by Atsumu. I think that's his name. Gosh, I'm never gonna get these twins right. This is why I gotta rewatch the whole thing a second time. And now Atsumu is inspired by Hinata. And this is just the beauty of amazing competition where everyone is trying to be their best. It's like a play off of each other. You do this, oh yeah, well I'm gonna take that and then throw it back this way. And then you're gonna take that and then do something else. And it's just a beautiful dance of elite competitors doing everything they can to get an edge on each other. But it's more than just trying to overcome each other. There is like an inspirational part where, wow, he just did that. Let me see if I can do that right back. And it kind of reminds me of freestyle battle. I don't know how many of you listen to hip hop. Hip hop was based on a game called Dozens, which is another word for like a freestyle game where two people would battle it out in verbal attacks, but they would have to rhyme and they'd have to be somewhat poetic. And the way you win some of those battles is you use the words they use, but repackage it and one up them with their own words and their own analogies. And then hopefully you respond by using their analogies analogies and their words and it just kind of goes back and forth until someone comes up with the best diss or the best rhyme and that's how you win those freestyle battles. This kind of reminds me of that. You see Atsumu and Kageyama just trying different things and trying to imitate each other but one up each other. But as we see, it can't just be the battle of the two setters. Hinata, Tanaka, Aran, the captain from Inari, I already forgot his name but everyone's contributing and trying to one up each other. Sorry, I just went on like a total rant. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I definitely have to agree. This is definitely one of the best episodes so far, and I can't wait to rewatch it again, but we gotta finish this season. We got episode 24 and 25 coming up, 
And if you guys say that those episodes are even better, I gotta get my blood pressure checked after this. The difference between the two monthly subscriptions is that Tokyo Tree is more of a modern collection of snacks, and Sakura Co. includes a more traditional selection of authentic Japanese snacks. Make sure you check out all my other reaction videos all the way from season one, two, and three by clicking this playlist right here. And I know you're gonna like this video right here.